Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video I want to talk about partnerships. Specifically, how do you build partnerships and what can partnerships do for your business? In my channel, I talk a lot about the consulting economy or how the, the environment of work these days is moving towards independent contracting. And there's a whole lot of studies and a lot of data on how this is happening. And I t talk about it in previous videos, so I won't go into it now. But essentially, you have to remember that even as a freelancer or independent contractor, it doesn't have to be just you in your business. You can develop partnerships that can really propel your business to the next level. I'm talking about developing a broader level of connections and partnerships beyond things like a LinkedIn network, which I call a weak network. We're going to talk a little bit about how you build a stronger, more influential network for your business. So let's talk a little bit about what partnerships can do for you. The number one reason you bring on partners is that it can bring in more business. Because you're now interacting with and developing relationships with a broader range of business partners, your ability to attract new business and your funnel for new business coming towards you is 2x, it's 3x how many partners that you have. Number two is that with partners, you can actually take on bigger projects. You can take on more complex projects than you have before because you'll have a broader skill set and more bandwidth to do the work. Number three is extra brain power. And this is by having partners who have broader and bigger and different skill sets than yours, you are increasing the brain power of your business. It's not just you thinking through and trying to solve the problems. It's more than just you. The fourth way that partnerships can help you is that it can help you learn new techniques. It can help you learn new things and new ways of doing things, new methodologies. By developing and having relationships with partners, it brings more knowledge of how to do things to the table. And by proximity, you will learn how to do more things by being involved with a greater range of partners. Another thing that partnerships can do for you is they can build your management skills. So by having more people and a more complex environment that you're working in and taking on bigger projects, it can build your ability to manage people and manage projects. Number six is that it builds your communication skills. By having more complex projects and a greater number of people that you have to communicate to, it will de facto increase your need to develop great communication skills. Number seven is you have to practice reciprocal business relationships. And this is that you have to think about what's in it for them as well as what's in it for you. You may need to take their prices, their fees into consideration as you're developing a project or a proposal. The eighth thing that partnerships can do for you is it can spread your reputation and your influence. By interacting with a greater range of partners and possibly a greater range of clients, your reputation will increase and your level of influence will increase. Number nine is that it increases your meaningful network. And as I said before, not just a weak network of acquaintances or LinkedIn contacts, a meaningful, strong network of people that you're doing business with and partnering with as you do that business. Number 10 is you're going to have a more fulfilling career. You're going to be doing bigger work, better work. You're going to have more relationships, more communication with people. You're going to be learning more things. So you're going to have a more fulfilling career. Number 11 is you're going to have more fun because you're going to be doing bigger and better things. You're going to be having more contact and learning more again. You're going to have a great career. And in that great career, you're going to be having a lot more fun doing what you're doing. And number 12 is when it comes down to it, it builds good karma. By developing partnerships and working in partnership with people, you're going to be able to help them succeed. You're going to be able to help yourself succeed. You're going to be able to help clients succeed in their businesses and more clients and bigger clients succeed. And all of this is just going to bring more good things to you. So how do you go about finding partners? You want to reach out to people who have complementary skill sets. So if you're a designer, you don't want to just reach out to other designers. You want to reach out to copywriters or animators or web developers. You want to find people with complementary skill sets that will enable you to take on bigger and more complex jobs than you've historically been taking on for yourself. 
And where do you find them? You find them, at, you know, they could be old school alumni. They could be LinkedIn contacts that you've reached out to and started a more meaningful conversation with. You can meet them through regular old-fashioned networking, meetups, conferences. You can meet them through associations. They could possibly be old co-workers at old jobs that you used to work at. There's a million ways that you can meet new partners. So then what do you do after you've found or located these new partners? You want to take them to coffee or if you don't live in the same city, you want to have a video conference. I find video conferencing really great because you can see the person you're talking to and it's easier to develop a more personal relationship. You want to ask them about their lives, ask them about where they live, their family, their relationships, their dogs, their kids. You want to get to know them personally as well as professionally. 80% of people out there are open to new partnerships, so don't be worried about rejection. Yes, there are going to be people out there who have too much on their plate or they just don't have time to develop or nurture those new connections, but they're going to be in the minority, I absolutely guarantee you. You want to get to know their work history. You want to get to know the clients they've worked on, the kind of things they like to do, what really ignites their passion. And you also want to ask what their fees are, like how much they charge for what they do, because when you think about it, if you're bringing them in as a partner, you're going to have to mark up what they do, pay their fee, but then also for managing the project, a larger project, you want to have a little bit of a markup on their fees to cover your interaction with them. And then you also want to talk about what is their favorite mode of communication. Do they like Slack? Do they like email? Do they like a regular old phone call? What's the best way to engage with them? And after you get to know them a little bit, you want to ask them, is there anything you can do for them? You have to give in order to receive. So offering up a little bit of something for free is a great way to cement a relationship. Ask if there's anything that they have going on that you could help out with in any way. You also want to check out examples of their work because you want to make sure that they're at a level and are going to be bringing something to the table in this partnership that you can really use and that you can feel proud of. Now, over time, you want to stay in touch. You want to reach out to them every six or eight weeks, just ping them with an email or a text just to say hi, just to keep that relationship warm so they don't forget about you. And then when they're getting in new work or they're working with partners that they're keeping you in mind as well. You also want to make sure that you stay out there, you keep dating, you keep looking for and meeting new people because you don't want to get locked into just a small set of partners because things happen. You know, people get hit by a bus or they join a company or take a full-time job or they decide not to do what they're doing at all anymore. You don't want to get caught with your pants down. You want to have a broad network of partners that you can draw on when you need them. And when you start engaging with them, you want to start with low stakes interactions. You don't want to bring a brand new partner into some gigantic, really important, high profile job that you just have to hit the ball out of the park on. Start with a lower stake interaction. And also when you're working with people, pay really close attention to their communication style and to their level of organization and their promptness to coming to meetings. Those sorts of things are really important when you're working with someone and their work with you is going to be a reflection of you and your consultancy with your client. So you want to pay attention to how well they run their own business. So when it comes down to it, partnerships can really breathe new life into your business. By developing partnerships and working with those partners, you can increase and grow the number of clients you work on. You can increase your business development efforts. You can increase the scope of the jobs that you're working. You'll be increasing the influence you have in the marketplace and your presence in the marketplace and improving your reputation. By showing up more in the marketplace, you're going to have greater brand recall for your particular brand, your freelance brand, your consulting brand. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on partnerships and the value of partnerships for your consulting business or your freelance practice. And if you did, please hit subscribe below so you can see my videos when they come out. And from Verhal Brand Design, my strategic branding and design agency, thank you so much for watching. And if you need help with your brand strategy, your brand design, or your professional creative career, please reach out to me at philipvandusen.com and let's see what we can do to take you to the next level. And with that, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.